Good evening, everybody. Aaron Keller along with you until possibly 8 p.m. as we wait for testimony to roll along in the Kellen Winslow, the second case out of California. Pretty incredible testimony there in the trial of Kellen Winslow, the second out of California. We're going to be following this throughout the evening as this break rolls along and his testimony picks back up. Those are the words of the so-called Jane Doe number one, one of the accusers in this case. Remember, Winslow facing a series of crimes related to basically sex acts. The whole list is very, very long. I have it right here. Many of these include multiple counts. Along with me here tonight, attorney Terry Austin. She's with me in studio. So this is hard to listen to. It is, Aaron. It's very hard to listen to. And Jane Doe, number one, is not a very credible witness. As you said earlier when we were speaking, usually you want to give the benefit of the doubt to the victim. But here, her testimony is so incredulous, and it's all over the map. You know, it, it's hard for me to say this, but I think that I agree, because normally I want to be very empathetic to someone who says that they're a victim of a heinous crime like this, and that's what this woman claims. And we have a number of accusations against this particular defendant, but they need to be proven in a court of law. And in this case, some of the cross-examination has revealed a lot of inconsistencies on so many different topics that I have to wonder. Now look, it's not my place to sit here and judge. That's the jury's job. But I have to assume members of the jury are wondering if that direct examination testimony is true. That's correct. And first impressions make a big difference. I don't think that there was an option because she's Jane Doe number one. And sequentially, she's the first one up but she's not making a very good witness. She's talking about a gun or maybe there's a knife. She didn't say that before. She's saying that he's now a terrorist. Apparently she made comments earlier about black men and Mexican men and what they do. So she's coming across a bit of a racist as well. You know, those are harsh, uh, harsh words politely put, but we're gonna listen back to some of the direct examination from Jane Doe number one, this was when she was making the prime accusations against this defendant, a former NFL player. That's some of the direct examination of Jane Doe number one in the case here against Kellen Winslow II. He is accused of a series of sex crimes involving women ages 17 all the way to 77. Attorney Terry Austin, when you're on cross-examination, which is where we are right now, you have to take that direct testimony and basically try to knock holes in it. It can come across as insensitive, but that's the job of the defense. They have to do it. Exactly, and frankly, I think he's doing a very good job. He's not being nasty or mean. He's simply pointing out the inconsistencies, and I think he's doing a great job so far. I was taught that you can never be nasty or mean on cross-examination because it comes across as though you're attacking the witness and not being an advocate for the truth, which is what a fact-finding mission like a trial is supposed to be. That's correct. What he's doing well is using her words against her. She used the word terrorist. Well, that makes it seem like, okay, is he a rapist? Is he a regular person? Is he a terrorist? It makes her seem as though she's exaggerating. And by using her words against her, I think he's going easy in the sense that he's not attacking her, but he's showing that she's being irrational by saying he's a terrorist. We have a couple of seconds left, but does it seem like the defense is making a fair case that this was somehow con consensual? Because remember, they have his DNA on her clothing. Absolutely, and they knew each other before, so I think he's doing a good job. We're going to watch this cross-examination continue into the evening here on the East Coast. It's mid-afternoon California time where this trial is occurring again. Kellen Winslow II on trial on a series of sex crimes, including forcible rape, including charges that involve abusing elders because of the ages of some of the victims, in this case, accusers, according to the defense. That's the beginning of the harsh accusations from Jane Doe number one in the Kellen Winslow II sex crimes case out of California. Attorney Terry Austin with me here in New York. Those are the direct words of the accuser. The first accuser, jurors have to be scrutinizing her. Is she believable the way she worded things there on direct? I think she's better on direct than what she was on cross. I think that she's explaining a situation that could be very frightening for anyone. You don't have to have a gun or a knife or beat someone up to make them afraid and to make them do what you tell them to do. So the situation sounds scary. We're going to continue listening to more of the direct accusations from Jane Doe number one. 
to see the defendant during this testimony is sometimes more telling than what's coming out of the mouth of the person sitting on the stand. Back to attorney Terry Austin now. We're waiting for this cross-examination to pick up in California. They're on a mid-afternoon break. We should be back live any moment. But I'm listening to this, and some people might be sitting there saying, wait a minute, why isn't she breaking down? Why isn't she crying? Because this is something traumatic. But not everyone reacts to stressful situations, such as an alleged rape, the same exact way. She's forceful. It may be that she does want to confront him. Yes, I'm a little bit surprised by her reaction. There is no sadness. There's no frightening words. She just is very matter of fact. Maybe it's because she's on the stand. Maybe the cameras, maybe the jury is frightening her. But she's not coming across extremely sympathetic to me. Some of the reaction coming in on social media right now. This is a joke so far. That's one of the opinions out there. We have to wonder what jurors are thinking. We won't know until the end, but the bottom line is Jane Doe number one is back on the witness stand. This is cross-examination. Let's go back to the trial of the former NFL tight end accused of a series of sex crimes. You're listening to live testimony from the so-called Jane Doe number one, the first accuser against former NFL player Kellen Winslow II. This is a case out of California. The question is whether this defendant committed a series of 12 sex crimes against a number of women. Attorney Terry Austin is with me here in our New York studios tonight. So we're watching this testimony roll along. This cross-examination is going for quite some time. What are your initial thoughts? It's going very well as far as the defense is concerned because it's making the woman look like she's not sure about what happened. She wasn't upset when the actual rape and assault occurred. She only got upset when he kicked her out of the car and she had opportunities to call 911. So I think they're making a very good case that this is consensual. A couple of minutes ago, we really watched the cross-examination heat up, and the defense attorney was really going, you know, you didn't go to the police, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Instead, you went to the bus stop to use the bathroom, and then all this time later, that's when you finally turn evidence over to the police. And it was a great cross-examination, and the judge had to stop it because the court reporter had to catch up. My guess is that the defense attorney was like, oh, man, I was on a roll. I agree. I thought that was interesting that he stopped at that point in time because he was on a good roll. He was showing that everything she said didn't make sense. If you were really in trouble, you should have called 911. How does the prosecutor rehabilitate this witness? I think he's going to have to come back, do redirect, and show that you don't need a gun or a knife to be afraid, and to show that if you're a victim, and that word is a big word. If you're a victim of a crime, you might not report it initially. So he's going to have to show that there are reasons for these inconsistencies. And that memories change in traumatic events. Sometimes it's hard to remember certain things. So there could be a way for the prosecutor to sort of uh, get new traction out of this witness. We're going to wait and see how long this case rolls along tonight. We'll be here as long as we need to be for live testimony coming out of California. We will take a break and be back with more live testimony from Jane Doe number one, accusing a former NFL tight end of sex crimes.